morning. Next Sunday, uh, the, the only service in the valleys will be the blanket preaching at St Mary's Churchyard at three o'clock. Um, bring your berries and the rest. <laughs> but there'll be excellent afternoon tea in Cabernet Hall afterwards. And now I have to read you an edict. At a meeting held at Selkirk and Ashkirk Parish Church on Sunday the 26th of May, after morning wish worship, the nominating committee chose the person who they wished to propose to the congregation of Selkirk and Ashkirk linked with Edric and Yarrow to be our new minister. The name of the person proposed is Reverend Dr. Kwame Allegra, who is currently Assistant Minister of Law Parish Church in the Presbytery of the Fourth Valley in Clydesdale. Arrangements have been made for the Reverend Dr. Kwame Allegra to conduct public worship in Kirkup Church on Sunday the 4th of August at 11.30. Immediately after the service, there will be a vote on whether or not Reverend Dr. Kwame Alga should be appointed as the new minister of Selkirk and Ashkirk linked with Edric and Yarrow congregations. Anyone whose name appears on the electoral register of Edric and Yarrow congregations and who is present at the vote on the 4th of August shall be entitled to vote. No one else shall be entitled to vote. This is from Robert Turnbull, the Asian moderator. Now I'd like to hand over to Scott, who is going to give his last service <laughs> in Thanks, Anne. Yeah, it's a, it's a sad time because it's the last service. Um, next week I'll be in Selkirk for the last time. And I think, as most of you know, um, I'm uh, going to be moving on to Channel Kirk and Lauder to be there uh, locally starting in, in August. But we will obviously continue to pray for all of the congregations, and we've made many good friends here. Let's begin our service by singing hymn 129. The Lord is King, lift up your voice like earth, and all the heavens rejoice. From world to world, the joy shall ring. The Lord omnipotent is King.
Shall we pray? Lord God, how good it is to worship in your house on your day. Receive ourselves, receive these offerings as we present them to you for your glory and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we present them. Amen. Since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for all who wait on him. You welcome those who do right and all who follow your ways. Shall we pray? Lord God, we draw near to you on this your day. We come with our hymns of praise and of thanksgiving, for you are the one true God. You are worthy of all our praise and all our thanks. You are majestic and glorious, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing. Even before we were born, you knew us and you have great plans for each one of us. You are loving and kind. Your love endures forever. You are faithful and just, and we can always rely upon you. You have brought us out of darkness into your marvellous light. Your promises to us are encouraging and uplifting, as you always keep them. You watch over us, Lord, day and night. You never sleep nor rest. We feel safe in your company, Lord. We put all our hope and trust in you. You have stilled and quietened our very souls. You have wonderfully blessed us. You have met all our needs and more. Lord, you are listening to us now as we pray. You are always eager to hear from us. You are attentive to our pleas and our cries. And you answer us when we call out to you. Lord God, you are always thinking about us. We are always on your mind, for you care about us so much. Thank you, Lord. Receive our praise and our thanks this day. Prepare us for all that will come our way this week. And hear us as we join together in the prayer which Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Number 189 is a lovely little hymn. We'll just, <clears throat> just stay seated to sing this. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here and will remain seated.
reading uh, this morning comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 9 to 17, round about page 195, Romans um, 8, written about life in the, in the spirit, and then um, Paul goes on to, to talk about us being children uh, of God, and Anne will read it for us, Romans 8, from verse 9. You do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the scripture tells you to, if, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you because you have been put right with God, even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from death, lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of the Spirit in you. So then, my brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. It is not to live as our human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. The Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children, and by the Spirit's power we cry out to God, Father, my Father, God's Spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess him the blessings he keeps for his people, and we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. Amen. It's very peaceful in here today, I just feel the sense of, of God's presence with us as we've just sung uh, earlier on, so it's nice to, to just sense that today as we listen to his word and what he's saying, what the spirit is saying to the church and to each one of us as individuals. We're going to sing uh, now a wonderful uh, modern hymn by Stuart Townend. One of Andy's favourites. Um, In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. <laughs> Oh 
hands towards us always. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. This morning we're going to look together at just how great and wonderful our Lord God really is. With some verses from Isaiah um, 63, um, other parts of Isaiah, and also Jeremiah. Isaiah 63 and verse 7. I will tell the Lord's unfailing love. I will praise the Lord for all he has done. I will rejoice in his great goodness to Israel, which he has granted according to his mercy and his love. And here the prophet expresses just how much God cares for us and loves us as his people, as his children. He talks of his gracious deeds, his praiseworthy acts, his great favour, his tender mercy, his abundant and steadfast love. I suppose it can be all summed up in the following words. His constant, God's constant and unfailing love. His constant and unfailing love. I will tell of how great is the Lord's constant and unfailing love, says the prophet. There are two things to notice here. First of all, we must be so convinced of his great love that we are compelled to tell others about it. Martin Smith's hymn, I could sing of your love forever. We have often sung love divine, all love's excelling joy of heaven to earth come down. And at Christmas time, love came down at Christmas. Love, all oh lovely, love divine. We must tell others how much God loves us, each single one of us, without exception. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story. Tell me the old, old story of Jesus and his love. We must tell others how the Lord our God, by his Holy Spirit, helps us day by day through all our ups and downs because he simply loves us. We must tell them about Jesus as a personal friend, as our helper, as our Lord. As another modern praise song has it, you're my friend and you are my brother. Even though you are a king, I love you more than any other, even more than anything. We must tell others what a friend we have in Jesus. The second thing is his love is constant. He keeps on loving us. He never fails to love us. He never stops loving us. Ray Charles used to sing, I can't stop loving you. But the Houston sang, I will always love you. And that's exactly what God is saying to you and me. I will never stop loving you. I will always love you. How wonderful and reassuring is that. His love endures. It goes on forever. Give thanks to the Lord and God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good. He is above all things. His love endures forever. Psalm 136. Give thanks to the greatest of all gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the mightiest of all lords. His love endures forever. He alone performs great miracles. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. God's love for you and me never fails. He never gives up on us. He never forgets about us. He never abandons us. He just keeps on loving us. Isaiah 49, the people of Jerusalem said, the Lord has abandoned us. He has forgotten all about us. And the Lord answered them, can a woman forget her own baby and not love the child she bore? Even if a mother should forget her child, I will never forget you. Jerusalem, my people, I can never forget you. Look, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. His love for us never fails. His love is constant. And so along with Isaiah, we praise him for all that he has done for us and continues to do for us. We proclaim that the Lord has richly blessed us. We tell of how he has shown us his great mercy and compassion and constant love. As Psalm 23 has it, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Our God has been merciful to us. He has shown us mercy. What does it mean? 
What does it mean to show mercy to someone? Well, of course, it means to pardon them, to forgive them for something they have done. Someone has described God's mercy as not getting what we deserve. Psalm 103, he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. God pardons us. He forgives us. He lets us off. He doesn't hold it against us. Make no mistake, each one of us is guilty. Guilty of sin and of going our own ways. But the Lord our God pardons us because he is merciful. Micah chapter 7 and verse 18 in the message translation. Where is the God who can compare with you, wiping the slate clean of guilt, turning a blind eye, a deaf ear to the past sins of your precious people? You don't nurse your anger. You don't stay angry long. For mercy is your speciality. That's what you love the most. And as we move on in Isaiah 63 to verses 8 and 9, For the Lord said, Surely they are my people, children who will be true to me. And so he became their saviour. In all their suffering, he also suffered. He personally rescued them. In his love and in his mercy, he redeemed them. <coughs> And surely this points us forward to Jesus, the Son of God, the Redeemer, the Saviour, the Lord. It is God, and God alone, who can save us from our sins. Only he could rescue us by coming himself in the form of his Son. Such a vital and important work could never be carried out by a messenger or an angel. Only by God himself. As our Easter hymn has it, there was no other good enough pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. So Jesus is our Saviour. Jesus is our Rescuer and our Redeemer. My Jesus, my Saviour, we have often sung, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Or as we've often also sung, there is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. And so by his sacrificial death on the cross, by his glorious resurrection from the dead, Jesus, the Son of God, has made it possible for you and me to be forgiven. Forgiven of all our sins, past, present and future, and therefore able to enter into God's holy presence and to enjoy living with him forever. Jesus has done it all for us. He has made salvation and forgiveness possible for all of us. He has done his part. Our part is to believe that he has done this for us personally. Believe that he died on the cross for you, for me, and that he rose again from the dead for you, and for me, and receive him by his Holy Spirit into our lives to take charge. Believe and receive. As John chapter 1 verse 12 puts it, to all who received him, Jesus, to all those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to be called children of God. So God is proud of us. He is proud of you and me. How do I know? Well, the Bible tells me so. Isaiah 43, you are precious to me, verse 4. You are precious to me, you are honoured, and I love you. God is saying that to you and me. Isn't it great to hear those words and know that God is addressing them to, to us? You're precious to me, he says. You're honoured and I love you. This means that we are of infinite value to him. We are unique. We are beyond compare. We are honoured by God our Father. We are precious to him. He respects us. We have our own dignity, our own integrity. We are loved by God himself. He declares his devotion to us when he says these three little words, I love you. And we know how much those words mean to us when uh, we hear them from someone who truly loves us. But to hear them from the Lord God himself, now that is surely something else, truly awesome. But we know it's not just enough to say those words. Whoever says them to us has to really mean them. They have to show us that they love us. They have to demonstrate their love for us. 
Their words have to be backed up by their actions. And that's exactly what God has done, as Isaiah tells us here. He made us in his own likeness. He has set us free. He is always with us. He gave up everything for us. He has proved that he loved us by all that he has done and is still doing. By all that Christ has done for us on the cross. There's a children's hymn called I'm Special. I'm special because God has loved me. For he gave the best thing that he had to save me. His own son Jesus. Crucified for all the bad things I've done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much. I know I don't deserve anything. Help me feel your love right now and know deep in my heart that I am your special friend. So never forget that you are special. Never forget that you are precious. Never forget that you are honored. Never forget that God thinks you are great. Never forget that God loves you. Loves you with an everlasting and never ending and eternal life. Never forget that his love endures forever. It keeps on going. God our Father is always with us. He watches over us as a loving Father watches over his children. He wants the best for us. He has wonderful plans for us. Jeremiah speaks of this and the words are on your order of service. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So let's sum up what the Lord is saying to us here in his word from these passages. The Lord has done great things for his people. He has been gracious to them. He has shown them great favour. He has been merciful to them. He has poured out his love for them. He has brought them into his family. He has called them his own children. He has become their saviour. He has sent his son to rescue them. And through his son, he has redeemed them. He has brought them back to himself. He has lifted them up into his holy presence and has carried them as a loving father would carry his children. He has loved them with an everlasting love. He has honoured them. He has called them precious. He has great and wonderful plans for them to prosper them, to give them hope and a future. So my dear brothers and sisters here in Ettrick, the Lord has done great things for you. The Lord has been gracious to you. He has shown you great favour. He has been merciful to you. He has poured out his love upon you. He has loved you day after day. He will never stop loving you. He has brought you into his family and called you his own children. He has become your saviour. He has sent his only son to rescue you. Through his son he has redeemed you. He has called you back to himself and lifted you into his holy presence. He has carried you as a father, loving father carries his children. He has loved you with an everlasting love. He has honoured you. He has called you precious. If the Lord has done all of these things and more for his people and for you in the past, will he not continue to do so in the future? Remember those words from Isaiah 49. Can a woman forget her own baby and not love the child she bore? Even if a mother should forget her child, I will never forget you, says the Lord. My people, my children, I can never forget you, he says. Look, I've written your name in the palms of my hands. My dear brothers and sisters here in Ettrick, the Lord loves you. You are precious to him. You are his honoured children. He thinks you're great. You're special to him. He's proud of you. So don't worry what might happen tomorrow or next week or next year or whatever. Don't worry about anything. As Stevie Wonder sang, don't you worry about a thing. God loves you. God has great plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The Lord has looked after his people here year after year after year. And he will continue to look after each one of you. 
simply because he loves you. You are his precious children, joint heirs along with Jesus the Son. And just like the father in the story of the prodigal son, he will never, ever stop loving you. Shall we pray? <coughs> father, it's good to hear so many things about you and what you've done for your people in the past and what you've done for each one of us here in the past and in the present and will do in the future. Lord, we thank you for your constant and your never-ending love. We thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die in our place and to be raised to life so that we too, through our faith and trust in him, might be brought back to you. And Lord God, we thank you that the plans, for the plans that you have for your church here and for the churches in this area. Lord God, we thank you for the hope that you give us. We thank you for the love, for your understanding. We thank you for all that you are and all that you mean to us. We thank you that we are precious to you and that you love each single one of us. And we give our thanks in Jesus' name. Our next two hymns are, are next to each other. One's 511 and then we move on to 512 so you can just keep your hymn books open. So the first one, 511, your hand, O oh God, has guided.
join together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we come now to bring our prayers in the silence and out loud for others and for ourselves. Lord, how good it is to have gathered here today to sense your presence, your peace, your love that you continue to show to each single one of us. Lord, we pray for those that are feeling a bit distressed today for different reasons. Lord, you know those reasons. For those who feel a bit low because of situations of things that have been happening in their lives, things that are happening in the, in the world and closer to each one of us. Lord God, bring us your comfort and your peace. Show us those plans that you have for us to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us faith, give us hope and the future. Lord God, we remember those who are not so well today, those who are in their hospitals near here, those who are ill at home, Lord, we pray for those who care for them in the hospitals and in the home. We pray for those who look after the elderly people in our communities here. Lord, we pray for the younger people, for those on holiday from schools at the moment, for those who are still here, for those that are away on holiday. We pray that it will be a time of refreshing for the children, for the teachers, for the helpers, for all who are involved in our, our schools and our colleges. Lord God, we ask your blessing upon those who have been bereaved lately, or for those who, for whom this time of year brings back memories of those who are sadly no longer with us. Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you that they have blessed us with their presence. We ask that you would help us to continue to fondly remember them. Lord, we continue to pray for our world, for the troubled areas where there is still strife, like in Ukraine and, and Gaza. Lord, we feel so helpless to do anything about these situations. But day by day, we must continue to pray for the people of those nations, for the leaders. Lord, we ask that you would guide our leaders, give them wisdom, help them to know the right things to do in different situations. Father God, we ask that now in the silence you would bring to our minds those that we would pray for at this time today. Lord God, we thank you for this time of silence, which is not really silence, but a time when you hear our prayers as we, as we give them to you. And a time when we hear what you are saying to us. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of this area in which we live. We thank you that you continue to bless us. We thank you for our friends, for our families, those near and those far. Lord, continue to bless all those who, who minister and serve in this church. We pray for, for Kwame when he comes in a couple of weeks' time to preach his soul nominee. And we ask your blessing on him and his wife and daughter. We pray for all who will come to, to this church and to the other churches to celebrate Sunday by Sunday, to praise your name, to understand just how great you are and to feel and sense your presence in this place and in other places and know the amazing love that you continue to show to each one of us. So Lord, hear our prayers, for we bring them in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And we conclude by giving all the glory to the Lord our God. 512, 512. To God be the glory of great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in.
we are leaving a wee bit earlier than we, we thought we'd, but um, because the Minister is leaving at Border um, at the end of this month, it's important that we have a, a straight changeover, just as what happened when Margaret uh, retired here and I took over the next Sunday. Um, so it's a wee bit earlier than we, we, we really anticipated, um, but I think by if all goes well in a couple of weeks' time, um, early September, early mid-September, you'll have a, a new minister and we might uh, catch up with some of you. Um, I hope to be at uh, the induction service, uh, which will be drop time in, in, in September, all being well. But we'll, uh, we'll have many fond memories of here and of each, each one of you. So uh, thank you very much for your fellowship uh, and your, your, your friendship over the last two and a half years. Even though we've, we've disappeared to follow foreign crimes for, <laughs> for three months at time, um, we've, we've come back and it's been nice to have this, this month or so uh, with you. Before your new ministry. So thank you very much for being here.